Hello everyone and welcome back to A Ring the Educator. Today on Murdered While Pregnant, we highlight Kendalyn Sexton, who was murdered on March the 30th, 2022. Kendalyn was a 30-year-old mother of four young children who was murdered in her third trimester of her pregnancy. Reportedly, she captured her own murder on her cell phone. It is also reported that her murderer sent the cell phone footage to a family member who then notified the authorities. Candelyn was reported to be kind, loving, and dedicated to her children. She was greatly loved, and she will be missed by those who loved her. After this, Disclaimer, we will play the video of why I started Murder While Pregnant and then Kendallin's story. Condolences to the family and friends. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Murdered While Pregnant. I was in nursing school in 1989 when first introduced to pregnant women being at a higher risk of being murdered than dying from pregnancy-related issues. This shocked all of us young nursing students. Surprisingly, this continues today, which is why I want to bring awareness in hopes to save pregnant mothers and their babies. Additionally, it is my hope that people seek mental health treatment instead of hurting others. Wall Street Journal reporter Nidhi Sabaraman reported homicide as the leading cause of maternal death. Pregnant women in the United States die by homicide more than they die of pregnancy-related causes, and they frequently are killed by a partner, according to a study published last month in Obstetrics and Gynecology. Researchers revealed this grim statistic by using death certificates to compare homicides and pregnancy-related deaths across the entire country for the first time. So today, I present the stories of these mothers. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, as well as leave a comment. And if you know of a mother who has been murdered while pregnant, please share her story with me so that I can share it with others so that we can bring more awareness to this issue and hopefully combat it together. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Police say one person is dead after a shooting in Evansville, and the suspect is in custody. Mitch Carter was on West Indiana Street today while police investigated, and he joins us live from there right now. Mitch. Yeah, yeah, guys. I'm here on West Indiana Street, where earlier today, police found a woman's body. The call came in at 10.14 a.m. Wednesday from a third party. At first, police say the caller told them somebody was shot at an address on North Elliott but police soon realized they needed to head to the 2600 block of West Indiana. When we arrived, we saw heavy police presence surrounding the home and officers with weapons trained on the home. EPD officer Taylor Maris tells us before they could move in, they had to make contact with the suspect. Officers hadn't gone inside the home yet because they didn't know if the suspect was still inside. The suspect in question, 30-year-old Scott Terry Jr. Police were able to make contact with him over the phone and come to find out he was nowhere near the home. Uh, initially, he went to Kentucky and came back. Uh, so, you know, our officers were able to talk this man to come back and uh, tell us about what occurred. Once they figured out he wasn't on scene, police say they went inside the home and found a woman dead with a gunshot wound to the head. Police say Terry told them he was in Henderson, but would come back and speak with them. Uh, they were able to get enough information out of him and from him to get him to come to headquarters um, to speak with detectives. And when he crossed that state line, police stopped his car near Highway 41 and Waterworks, and they took him into custody. And police say he admitted he shot the victim, and Terry's now facing a murder charge. Yeah, now behind me here, things are looking a little bit more normal now. You know, the crime tape is down. There are cars back on the street. And people are, you know, passing on the street. But, of course, we'll keep you updated as more information comes out in the preceding investigation. For now, live in Evansville, Mitch Carter, 14 News. All right, Mitch, thanks. 
Eight-year-old Candlin Michelle Sexton died of multiple gunshot wounds to the head. Good evening, I'm Brad Bird. And I'm Shelley Kirk. As Sexton's family continues to process the tragedy, family friends are reflecting on the love for her children and how this could have happened. Eyewitness News' Cody Bailey met with one of those friends, 10-year-old Shane Dwyer, who was with his mother. The murder on Indiana Street has left this quiet neighborhood in disbelief, including 10-year-old Shane Dwyer, who would make the trip down Indiana Street to visit his group of friends and their mother, Candle and Sexton. Sexton, who was pregnant at the time of the murder, leaves behind grieving children learning to cope without their mother. She was really nice. They looked like they loved her so much. To Shane and his family, the love was even apparent from the suspect, Scott Terry Jr. He seemed like a nice guy until the whole incident. He would not be rude or anything. The tragedy has left a hole in Dwyer's heart as well, who is grieving for his best friend and classmate. He was my very best friend. I knew him since kindergarten. And I knew his mom too. The bond between the Dwyer children and the Sexton children almost inseparable as the two families would spend countless hours playing together, including here in the 2600 block of Indiana Street. We would go to their house and like play. We would ride our bikes, play in their backyard, tag, hide and seek. With the games on hold, Shane is now taking a more sentimental approach to his friendship. I made him a card at school and I'm once I see him, I'm going to try to cheer him up. Until the empty seat on the school bus is filled again, Shane has a special message for his best friend. I can't wait for you to come back to school. And we're praying for you. Reporting in Evans.